Welcome back. This week we got another dry fly. Uh, we're going to do a blue wing olive quill bodied uh, cat skill traditional style dry fly. Uh, we're going to do it in a size 16 on a Daiichi 1110. Um, size 16 is going to be the bigger end of the blue wings that you'll see. But Typically, I'll run these in 18 to 22, but quite honestly, if they're taking size 22, I don't mess around with those too much anymore these days. If they're taking 22s, I'm chucking streamers. I'm probably chucking streamers 90% of the time when they're coming off anyhow, but I do still fish them. I do still tie them, so I just prefer the streamer game these days. Um, to start, we're going to go with our tail. Um, this is just a, a little Coke de Leon feather. Uh, you can see like the different segmentations and everything in it. Not exactly representative of a blue wing olive, but I just kind of like the looks of them a little bit more. Um, I pre-tied in just a little ball at the very end, right where the barber hook comes up, as always. Um, just pre-tied in a little ball right there. And you'll see why in a second. This is going to serve to split our tails. Uh, I'm going to measure this out just slightly longer than the shank of the hook. And we'll get this tied in. And just run this to the back. Keeping everything right on top. Right back to where we formed that little ball and you can see our tail right there um, it's relatively long tail for a size 16 but if you're going to air in this air on the long side as opposed to the short um, now what we're going to do is just take our feathers and you can 100 percent tie this fly without doing this step. It does take a little bit longer. Um, not necessary whatsoever. But I, it just sexies the fly up a little bit. That ball that we that I pre-tied in back there um, and because I'm working with GSP I'm going to throw a half hitch in here. That ball that I pre-tied in naturally splits the tails and then what I'm going to do is just run a figure eight through this. Uh, once I get them how I want them, uh, it's pretty close to even on both sides there. Doesn't have to be perfect. So I'll just come right around this side. One, two and bring your two wraps on this side as well. Don't release the tension and come back the other direction keeping your tension at all times. If you let go of your tension your threads gonna coil up and it's gonna wind up trapping fibers and you're gonna lose your the split tape or the split effect that you're looking for. There you can see the split tails that we're going, that we're after. Um, normally on my dry flies, if I'm not, if I'm just tying regular tails in and they're just going straight back, I tie my wing case in or my wings in first. But this just gives me a little bit of room to work with. And now I'll go in and I'll tie in my, I'll tie in my wings. Same as last week with our PMD, I'm using this Snowshoe Rabbit. I use this a lot on my dry flies. I just love the way that it looks. It's very naturally buoyant. Um, easy material to work with. I'm going to run this through my comb real quick just to get some of the junk out of there. And we're going to set this in, once again tying it in from the tips, just kind of measure it out to where you think it's going to get close to the back of your hook where your body is going to wind up. 
and then just tie this in. Well, that's a little bit long right there, but we'll cut it down to size. The big thing that I'm looking for in this is just building my taper with my with the tips of the snowshoe. And we got a little bit going away from us. Now we'll take this and stand it up. Build a little ball of thread right in front of your wings. And you can see how that stands up real nice for us. Once again, a little bit on the sparse side, but I think we'll be just fine. I'm going to measure this out and just give it a quick trim. It's going to be yeah, it's pretty close. Pretty close. Could have left them a little bit longer, but I don't get too crazy about wings. Um, for a long time, with my dry flies, I completely left them out. I I wouldn't even I wouldn't even tie wings in. It would just be a body and half on a tail. Um, it is a little bit easier to track when you have the wings on, so I started putting them back on, but I don't think it does much for actually catching fish. Uh, there are other people that will swear by them that your wings have to be absolutely perfect. I think those people are crazy, but it is what it is. All I'm saying is wings aren't that important. If you want to skip it, fine. Alright, so what we did is we went through and we upright and divided our wings. Um, once again, another step that you don't have to take, but if you want to sexy your fly up and make it look good, you can go ahead and upright and divide those. Just run a figure eight through your material, you're good to go. Um, run this to the back. kind of corral that a little bit. It got a little bit too wide for me, but I'll do that here in a second. Um, next we're going to grab our quill body, or we're going to grab our quill, and this is blue wing olive dyed. The shade is, I don't know, it's a little bit off. I prefer to tie these in betas, but in the betas color, but I'm out of them at the moment so we're going to do this in blue wing olive like i said the shade of this is just slightly off for my liking but it'll still catch fish try not to trap too much of our wing material build a little bit more taper come on the underneath side and trim this off now before you start to work with these quill bodies, have them in a container of water for, I would say, a minimum of five minutes. If you, if you try to tie with them when they're dry, they'll split and crack and wind up being unusable, honestly. So just put them in a little bit of water. It kind of softens the material up. It makes it easier to work with and you won't wind up wasting time and ending up without a fly. So the same as the turkey bot from last week, just take your time, one wrap in front of the other. And if you want to, you can take with this GSP and color the underneath portion and actually you know what, I forgot a step here. Forgot a step, I forgot to put some glue down. But like I was saying, you can color the underneath portion of this GSP, so it, if you wind up with a gap or something in one of your wraps, the white's not gonna show through all the way. But I'm not too concerned about that right now. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of glue here and just dab our thread with it same as with the PMD 
just a little bit of it. And take this and start over. One wrap in front of the other. Now this quill gets a little bit thicker the closer you get to the base of the stem. So it's going to have a natural taper this way as well. So don't get too carried away with your taper on your uh, on your wings. Don't have a ton of material in there because you'll wind up with a football looking body when you combine the two tapers of the stem and your material. Just nice nice even wraps all the way up to the front has this nice segmentation to it and we definitely got a little bit sparse on our wing case but not a big deal there's nice and even now with our wings I'm going to just take one wrap here go around this one time and it'll kinda don't pull on it real tight wait until you get about two or three wraps in and then you can clinch down on it a little bit and it just kinda brings our wing case together a little bit um, to where it's not almost looking like a spinner on the water see what we're working with here um, next we're going to take a dark done hackle and we're going to peel this back just just a touch so I have something to tie in and This is, as I alluded to last week, very much undersized. I mean, if you look at that hackle, that's probably a 20 or a 22. Um, I like them to be shorter. I don't like my hackle stems all the way down here, like you'll see in some on some patterns. It, the fly will ride at a 45 going down the river, and I just I, I don't like the way that it looks. I like it to be riding flush or if I can have some of the body in the surface film. Uh, I'm gonna take some super fine blue wing olive dubbing. Once again, less is more with this. And we're gonna dub through the thorax. Spin your rope on here and I'm going to lift this up first. Inevitably, you're going to trap a couple hairs from this snowshoe. You can see it's kind of two different colors. Like I was saying, the the quills are just a little bit off, in my opinion, but still looks good. I mean, it's still going to represent blue wing olive. And we have when we tied our hackle in, you have your package side facing up, so you just tie it in as you see it in the package, and. Um, I can't tell if it's going to be too short or not. I probably should use a hackle plier, but we're going to roll with this. I think I got enough to work with to where I can just keep it in my hands. I say that now, but when I go to finish it, and I 
wind up losing it and it all unravels I'll be doing this over again with the hackle pliers looks like we got lucky and we're going to tie off right in front of the eye and as you can see my my hackles are there's a, there's a hair out of place there we'll get but my hackles are so much shorter than what you typically see I like having my stuff as close to the film of the water as possible and trying not to cut excess material off and peel this back slightly we'll whip finish and we're just about done this one out of here you can see the nice split tails that we have um, our hackle is just about even with the point of our hook it goes down just a little bit further, but um, you could just cut it off flush if you wanted to. I'm going to leave it be. I think it's going to ride just fine. But the last thing that we'll do, finishing this off, and you can get this snowshoe rabbit and done. I typically just buy it in the cream color. And I'll just touch it up slightly with my Prisma color. You don't have to get too carried away with this. Just get the tips colored up. If you want to, you can leave them the, the color that they come out in the package and you can leave it in the cream. I mean, that's fine. It's prob honestly probably a little bit easier to track in the water if they're that color. But this is just more for the camera than anything. It's a little bit more accurate of a representation but that is your quill bodied blue wing olive and I'll zoom in a little bit more here so you can see the taper you can see the segmentation that this quill gives to the fly and that is essentially your quill bodied blue wing olive uh, as always questions comments leave them I'll get back to you as soon as I can and thanks for tuning in yet again, and we'll catch you on the next fly.